about two weeks ago, two candidates in an Oregon congressional race held a rare joint press conference where they leveled a charge against a third candidate. Take a listen to the local news coverage. Moving on, we wanted to bring you an update now to a story we told you about last night, the heated three-way race for the third congressional district in Oregon. That's Earl Blumenauer's seat in Congress. Last week, two of the candidates, Shushila Jayapal and Eddie Morales, held a press conference accusing the other candidate, Maxine Dexter, of taking dark money washed through a super PAC called 314 Action. They claimed without any evidence that 314 Action could be a front for far-right donors looking to take them out of the race. The candidate getting all that dark money support is Maxine Dexter, a state representative and local doctor. Now, at a debate, she was pressed by her opponent, Eddie Morales, to name the source of the funding. Take a listen. I want to spend the last second of mine asking Maxine, Maxine, will you look at the camera and tell Action uh, 315, 304 Action to disclose their donors before May 20th? Do you want me to Yes, I mean, sure, <laughs> but answer the question. It is I mean, absolutely, totally. they are legally obligated to disclose before their- Before May 20th, before the day before the election. Eddie, you understand as well as I do. This is a public forum, you can tell them in this public. Is, it is a public forum, and I believe in discussion and deliberation is and not Is Big Pharma funding you? Absolutely not, I've never How do you taken- know? Okay, I have to stop you yes. there. I need to let okay. Maxine yes. have a final word here. I will just say that this entire thing is frankly absurd. I have put my values on record. I have four years of voting records on progressive values. I have stood firm with people who have supported me and against people who have supported me. I took an oath of office and I've taken an oath as a physician to keep people at the center and do no harm. My integrity is frankly being questioned here, which is absolutely offensive. All right, well, we don't want to offend anybody. And of course, anybody accused of anything without evidence ought to have a chance to defend themselves. So let's take a closer look. And to be fair to our accusers, it did look off. Random state representatives don't generally find themselves on the winning end of millions of dollars of super PAC spending for no reason. And Sushila Jayapal, the candidate in the middle there, is the older sister of Pramila Jayapal, one of APAC's most concerted adversaries on Capitol Hill and the powerful chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. APAC had been unsuccessfully recruiting a challenger to Pramila Jayapal in her Seattle district. Now, looking for clues as to who might be funding the dark money operation, you could turn to the news outlet Jewish Insider, which does a great job covering congressional primaries through an Israel-Palestine prism. In early December, Jewish Insider flagged Sushila Jayapal's candidacy as alarming to Israel advocates, elevating the potential candidacy of Dexter as a strong opponent. So after a few days of reporting, I confirmed it was indeed APAC, and I found two sources who had knowledge of how specifically APAC had begun playing in the race without disclosing its role. It was routing money indeed through the pro-science, quote-unquote, pro-science super PAC called 314 Action Fund. So I published that story on May 10th at The Intercept. Now here's our friends at the local TV station again with 314's response. But Jaya, Paul, and Morales are demanding that Dexter tell 314 Action to reveal the donors now. They say they think they could be related to pro-Israel group APAC. And some recent reporting from the news outlet The Intercept supports that claim. We reached out to 314 Action Group yesterday and they did respond to us. We asked if MAGA Republicans are among their donors. They didn't outright say no, but they did say that they've spent tens of millions of dollars backing other Democrats to defeat MAGA Republicans in other states. They also said there's no evidence to support a claim that APAC is among their donors and that they disclose their donors every reporting cycle and follow the letter of the law. So again, not outright denying that APAC is involved, just there's no evidence there yet. So the Portland Mercury did some strong follow-up reporting on the race midweek, but Maxine Dexter continued to profess ignorance, even in the face of that reporting. But then undeniable pieces of evidence began to emerge. While the super PACs aren't required to disclose their donors until the day before the election, the candidate herself has to disclose regularly down the campaign stretch. So she had to produce what's called a 48-hour report after a May 7th fundraiser. Now, at that fundraiser, of the nearly 80 donors who gave that day, nearly 90% are also donors to APAC. In other words, it was an APAC fundraiser, which you can find out just by searching the names of those donors on the site there. 
The next day, Dexter disclosed having raised nearly $600,000 in the month of April after raising just about $300,000 during her entire campaign before that. Doubling or tripling your fundraising in the last few weeks of the race is not typical. That is not normal. And inside that $600,000 were scores of additional APAC donors of the ones we checked. We gave up after a while because it was, it was pointless. It was very obvious what was going on. But okay, maybe it's a huge coincidence that APAC donors are giving to her campaign, but it's not APAC donors who are behind the super PAC spending. How do we know APAC actually organized all of this? Well, I called one of the donors on the list and got through to her. This is Hone Dallasman. At first, she said she didn't remember giving to Dexter at all. When I told her the $3,300 donation of hers was in the FEC records, it clicked for her. She said, quote, I give all of my contributions through APAC. Whenever I am asked to give to their endorsed candidates, I give. So Dexter is an endorsed candidate, even though that's not public. If that wasn't enough to put the pieces together, a staffer at 314 Action Fund, angry that a PAC ostensibly dedicated to electing candidates with a science background was having its mission distorted to support pro-Israel candidates, reached out to me to share inside information. They told me directly about the nature of the APAC-driven operation. It was APAC. 314 took to Twitter to respond to my article, but did so four minutes before I even published it. And they accidentally denied the wrong thing. They wrote here, Ryan Grimm from The Intercept is once again making up stories out of thin air. His latest accusation that 314 Action is a front group or that 314 will be spending against Representative Cory Bush is a complete fabrication. But I had not, in fact, reported that 314 Action was expanding its campaign to target Bush directly. I reported that 314, with the heat on them, was planning to set up a shell pack they could funnel APAC money through. And so, Emily, I think what's going on here, so if you're trying, here's the question people would ask, like if you're trying to put together this plan. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.